pleasure to be here today. Thank you all for being here as well. Um, I have always been uh, fascinating, uh, fascinated with the idea of how to run a PowerPoint. Uh, <laughs> uh, with the idea of success. How do people achieve success? And I look at people I admire and I wonder what makes them different. Uh, how do they reach so far, go so high, and push their career and achieve so much? After thinking about this a lot, I've come up with the idea that success is a strange alchemy of interest, talent, and opportunity. That's me, I said that. Type of <laughs> Other people, you can find people that say, well, it's really a combination of natural talent, opportunity, and hard work. That's true. Uh, hard work is really important, but to me, you can't sustain hard work if you're not interested. So I say something else that you'll want to remember. Interest is the lubricant of effort, and I think that's really true. When you're interested in things, it's not hard to pursue them. Um, I had a hard time with that myself, though, when I was a young, uh, young lad. Uh, I was invited to join the uh, third grade creative writing program at Roosevelt School, one of the best in the country. And, um, uh, and I had written a story uh, that was a sensation in our school. It was really great. Everybody loved it because it opened with this sentence. The sentence was, there's a creepy old man who lives on my street and he can turn jelly beans into diamonds. Pretty cool, right? Pretty evocative stuff. <laughs> well, um, I had talent, because I wrote that line. I uh, had some opportunity, because I was in the third grade uh, writing class, which not everyone could get into. But I didn't have much interest. Um, I didn't work very hard. I was this guy who sat there without the beard. And um, it was a struggle for me to do the work, because I was really afraid that I couldn't measure up to that story and that great line I had written. And so I didn't do much work, I didn't turn in much, and I was met with this kind of reaction from my teachers. And, uh, there was great dismay, and they realized they had made a mistake, inviting me to be part of this class. And I was now labeled an underachiever. They actually told my parents, we're sorry, but your son Ty is an underachiever. And they kicked me out of the third grade, uh, grade <laughs> class. Um, which you can imagine put me under a dark cloud for honestly a long time. It was really hard to deal with the idea that I was an underachiever. And um, so I turned to something that was really unique. I don't know anyone else that's ever quite done it in this way. I started inventing baseball teams. And I would make stats for these uh, teams. They were all made up players. I'd write stories about them. And I'd do season after season after season of arithmetic, doing batting averages and one loss percentages and ERAs. And I had stacks of notebooks. I still have them. And it was incredibly uh, hard work, except I was interested. So I did it uh, endlessly. Had it been a homework assignment or my creative writing class, I never would have done it. I wouldn't have been able to. Um, so I look back and then I realize I had interest. There wasn't work for me to do this. I had some talent and to this day I'm really good with numbers now because I did all that stupid stuff. But there was no opportunity. There was no place to share this. No one else has ever seen those things. Uh, so it was kind of a waste of time and I had become someone that set a low bar. Because I was afraid not that I couldn't get over a higher bar, but I thought, well, what if I do? because I'll never do it again, and I'll be labeled as an underachiever again. Now, I went through school a very undistinguished career. Um, unlike uh, Jansen, I never realized the reality that set in. Um, <laughs> and so I had some interest. I love sports, and I love theater, and I was pretty good at it. But I would not seek any opportunities. I just wouldn't do anything. Like I played football in the park, but never on the football team, even though I was better than almost everyone on the team, because I was afraid, again, of failing. Um, and as you can imagine, with that great uh, track record in school, when I graduated, there were no opportunities for me. I really didn't know what I was going to do leaving high school. None of you are going to be that way, I'm sure. Um, and then suddenly, opportunity knocked. I had a girlfriend at the time. Sorry, honey. Um, and uh, she was a dancer. And she said, I could be a dancer. She looked at me, and we did some shows together. She said, God, you're really good at this. You could be a ballet dancer. And she'd show me these steps, and I would do them immediately. And in many cases, better than her, which she hated. Um, and I had talent. I was really good at it. But I had a total lack of interest. I didn't want to be a ballet dancer. It wasn't in my frame of reference. It was something I wanted to do. Well, she didn't give up. She bought me tickets to go see American Ballet Theater in Los Angeles. And uh, it was a really special time because Mikhail Baryshnikov had just defected from Russia, and he would be dancing that night. Amazing, amazing dancer. Um, as we came into the theater, we walked in, and I told my girlfriend, uh, you know, I'm going to get really bored, and so I'm going to go stay in the lobby probably, but I'll be here, we'll drive home, no problem, you know, you enjoy it. Well, when the curtain went up, I was transfixed. I couldn't believe it. It was everything I wanted to do. I saw these dancers on stage, a shiver went up my spine, as it is now. I couldn't believe how beautiful that was. 
these dancers, so powerful, so athletic, so artistic. It was everything I wanted to do. An artist and a dancer and an actor all rolled into one, and an athlete. That's everything I ever wanted to do. And the evening got better because Mikhail Baryshnikov danced. It was the world premiere, I believe, or the uh, North American premiere of this ballet called Medea. Amazing. And the ballet ended with push comes to shove with Bar uh, Baryshnikov in the lead. It was a trial of Tharp ballet. It was a sensation. Well, I sat in that theater. I turned to my girlfriend when I recovered my power of speech. And I said, <laughs> I'm going to be a dancer. So for the first time in my life, what did I have? I had interest. I left school. I was going to drama school in Santa Maria. I started classes at the Fowler Houston School of Ballet. I took 22 classes per week. Every class she taught, six-year-olds to 60-year-olds, I was there. Six months later, I was dancing professionally. I was in the Nutcracker, and I actually got paid to do it. I now had interest, talent, and opportunity. All three, three things had come together, changed my life. I loved every minute I danced. I even met my wife doing it, which was the best part. <laughs> but dance is a cruel master. I retired after 10 years, and uh, when I told my boss I was leaving the company, he gave me these words of inspiration, which I'll never forget. He said, Ty, you make me want to do uh, And that's what uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov left me with after having idolized him and uh, following him to American Ballet Theater. But I did, I did get to dance for him for four years, and it was unbelievable. Um, so why am I telling you all this? What's the point of this story? Um, well, I think all of us, we have to find our talents, whatever they are, and we all have them. And we have to be opportunistic. Once you have those talents, you have to look for places that you can share them with people, because doing them in a dark room, like I did with my baseball stats, leads you nowhere. But most important, above all else, you have to be interested. Because success is a strange alchemy of three things. Interest, talent, and opportunity. Because when you have all that, you can turn jelly beans into diamonds. <laughs>